I'm so tapped up, and this is Magic Cat. This is a little platformer here. It's on, I know it's on Nintendo Switch. That's what I'm playing on now. I'm not sure what other platforms. I'll, there'll be a link in the description for every platform it's on. I just, you need to hear this story. It's really well written. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. So obviously, I mean, once the Illuminati, you know, did their thing, I mean, then the, the Croatians, I mean, you, you saw what happened. I don't need to explain. I don't need to explain. Anyway, I'm actually gonna pop, I just needed you to see that amazing intro. Um, I'm actually gonna pop into, uh, this game's a little bit too long to do any kind of like a full playthrough or anything. There's like six worlds or something? Seven worlds. I guess it's the, what's well, this SNES game tended to have sevens? I think there was seven stars in Mario RPG. I think there's seven stars in the Paper Marios too. Um, I think there's like seven or so worlds in uh, Yoshi's Island. Let's just pop into the latest level here. The world map for music reminds me a little bit of Spyro. I don't know if I'm just thinking of Spyro because the, the new Spyro game's coming out. Well, not new Spyro, I mean the remake. But uh, just a little something about it. But, um, so yeah, this is a fun little platformer. I, I played a little bit of it. I played, I guess I finished just about one world. So controls are pretty simple. You move around, you can do this little hover. This little, the, the Yoshi's Island hover kind of deal. You just shoot hairballs or paw power, I don't know exactly. I think it's supposed to be hairballs. But, um, you can kind of slither around. There we go. You can also bump on top of the enemies. Um, I kind of actually really like this game has a very... Oop. That did not look like it should have squished me, but I guess it did. Um, every level is separated into four segments. The first three have a, like, a ruby that you need to collect for like collection purposes. Then there's a boss. And the bosses are pretty fun. You'd think a boss at the end of every level would get like exhausting, uh, but they're not crazy. They just kind of each boss has its own little gimmick. It kind of reminds me a lot of uh, Yoshi's Island again, not just because of the flutter jump. Um, just kind of every level tries its own new little gimmick, and I'm actually a big fan of that. I mean, gimmick is often used as a bad word, but I think for a platformer to really stay fun and interesting, uh, it really helps. Uh oh. It helps to have a new mechanic or a new enemy or whatever per level, and I think a lot of the best Mario games tend to do that. Like, um, there's a lot of themed levels in Mario 3, in Super Mario World, and especially in Yoshi's Island, um, Mario Galaxy, or not Galaxy, well, I mean Galaxy does too, but I mean, which, which is Odyssey, that's the one I'm thinking of. Mario Odyssey kind of does its own thing with each, ow, thing. How does Revive work? Oh, there we go. I guess it just pops you back down. Uh, so this game has kind of its interesting thing where you can... You use those potions that... See that blue meter in the right area? Not meter, but the potions. You can use those to... Oh, that was... Brilliant. I'm just gonna accept that loss. So I can explain this. So the game has checkpoints. And you use that blue stuff to basically make the game easier. And uh, you get bonuses for not using it to, like, collect the rubies and stuff. So... This is a mechanic, it's kind of a riff on a mechanic that I saw in, uh, I think it's Fox and Forests, right? Uh, I have that somewhere. What is it? Fox and Forest, yes. I, I tried that, I didn't really like that one. Oh yeah, that reminds me, uh, I did get re receive a review copy from the developer for this, by the way. Um, I always like to mention, oh, I already got that thing. Uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, but yeah, Fox in the Forest does this thing where you have to pay for checkpoints, and I don't really like that because like, I want to collect my money for stuff. This game also has a mechanic like this, but it costs 10 of those blue potions, but blue potions are only counted inside that one level, so I have no real reason to hoard them. It, um, it 
so I don't really feel bad about using them. It just kind of makes it a little bit more strategic of whether you need to get the checkpoint or not, and it's not really a big deal. I feel I feel like that's a nice balance. I, I still like I don't feel the game is necessarily super much better because of that mechanic, but I think if you're gonna have that mechanic, that's a good way of doing things. <laughs> I love his little uh, crawling animation on the ooh the little Mario World um, great thingers. Oh, get that. So if you like mini, uh, it's kind of it's not like a collectathon, but it's like a mini collection. Um, like a, a semi-completionist kind of aspect. You can kind of go through each level and on the progress screen, I can't show it right now. On the progress screen, it'll show you like if you took no damage. It'll show you if you um, oop, didn't use any revives, which I'm going to have to. Uh, it'll show you if you got all of the things. So it gives you a reason to replay the levels. Uh, I keep saying this so much, but it's a lot like Yoshi's Island in that there's that... Uh, Incentive that fun kind of incentive to replay the levels and it doesn't do or At least thus far it doesn't do the thing that some games do where you have to get all of the things in order to progress um, Tembo the badass elephant did that and I I don't like that I I like a collection aspect if it's like a fun little extra that you can do after you beat the game. Like, I, what I want to do first is beat the game, and then I want to go back and do all the extra fun stuff uh, maybe afterward. I'm going to go ahead and grab this checkpoint, because I've died a lot in this level. Just get squished. This is the first level where you get squished, so I think I'm just not used to that. <laughs> the bosses are kind of, or the enemies in general are just kind of all, you know, blobs. But hey, sometimes a blob is all you need. For better or worse, you can't mash to attack. I, I kind of prefer that, but it's just always in my instinct to check it out. In, in games where you have to mash to do more damage, like that's that gets like genuinely exhausting, kind of. Like a Gunvolt, Mighty Gunvolt Burst. That game is a very mash-heavy game if you want to get the best possible times. And it, it genuinely wears my thumbs out and like it's like, oh I gotta stop playing this. Oh see, I got a bonus for not reviving on the boss, I think. Again, it's just score, but I, I like little bonuses like that. I'm not tend to. I don't tend to be one to complete for the leaderboards, but I like a little thing like, oh hey, uh, I like going on here. It's like, oh you got a. What was that level two one? Yeah, you got the little no boss revive thing. And it's like, oh yeah, I'll go. I'll go. I'll retry for that, but I won't retry to get like you know. Oh, you got one in three hundred thirty terst billionth player numbers. I uh, don't like leaderboards. Especially because of how many freaking people cheat on those. Well, you can swim down in this stuff. There's a different level. Huh, I guess you can swim down in chocolate, but not in water. There's a different level where you had to um, hop up in the way high in the air, or you actually you had to find waterfalls to like push you extra far down. So like I said, it's just like a different mechanic at each level, and I really like that. Also, we're in like chocolate land. I guess I should have mentioned that, but yes. Chocolate land is apparently a thing. Ooh! Oh, it's like... It's that magical platform of water that floats in the air. I like that. It's, I'm just gonna say it's like mousse. It's chocolate mousse. Which, you've never had chocolate mousse, it sounds very unappealing. Like, I mean, why would you eat a mousse? But no, it's very good stuff. Oh, it's gonna do one of, it's one of these Kirby things where you gotta catch up to the thing. Or is it? Maybe it's not. I'm just gonna catch every bullet on the way down. I kind of like the revive system, especially in tandem with the. Uh, ow. I don't know what that was. I don't know. Oh. This time. Oh, 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 oh! Ah! Ruined. <laughs> Wait, can I get. No. Oh well. I, I should have not. There's lots of Kirby levels where you do stuff like that, and you gotta race like uh, uh, the golden monkey. And, uh, you get a thing if you beat the Golden Monkey, basically. There's lots of those little switches where if you press it, uh-oh. You gotta beat some enemies. Oh. And the cost for a revive keeps going up. But, you know, I want to keep the video moving, so I'll just, aw. Oh. I'll just burn my stuff. Come on. 
Oh, by the way, if you'd like Nintendo Switch, or if you have a Switch and you want to see some good games to play, um, I've got a... There's a bunch of other Switch games I've been meaning to do videos on. I just haven't, and I don't particularly know why. But I've got, like, Graceful Explosion Machine. Um, I've got uh, some other stuff. i got the Dark Witch games that I never... I'm not sure I did a, I did a video of the platformers, but I don't think I did a video of the spin-off. And I, I should do that. I really like the, uh, the RPG spin-off, uh, Brave Dungeon it's called. I should do... I'll probably do that after this. I guess I just haven't... I haven't played my Switch a lot, so I just don't think to do recording at all. Recordings of it. I know a lot of people think the Nintendo Switch is like the most glorious, best, you know... Every game should be on the Switch and stuff like that, but it's like, it's just a way to play games to me. I don't... If it's on the Switch or not on the Switch, I don't really mind too much. It's just like... I treat it like any other Nintendo console. I get the Nintendo games, and if there's other games that are good on it too, then good. But like, yeah. But there are lots of good games on it. I'm not saying the Switch is bad or anything. I just, I just hate that attitude of, Oh, somebody made a video game, but they dareth to not place it on thy Nintendo Switch? How dareth thee? You offendeth my sensibilities, if... And such forth. And yeah, there's, I like that this little world map. I guess I didn't mention it, but it's got this little world map, a lot like uh, Mario 3D World. I t I, I keep bringing up Mario stuff. I really do think, I mean, what, which, what platformer is not Mario inspired, right? But uh, I definitely feel a little bit of vibes of there. Horizontal trace. But it's got a little bit of openness to which level you can pick, too. I mean, the pixel art's simple, but it's got a, it's got a nice like, warm and cute feel to it, you know? Uh, what's this? I see. See, again, that's that, like, new mechanic every level thing. I like when you're gonna see something new every level. I have... I have screwed up the level, but oh well. That's right, Parker. Did you know they made a game about you and a wizard hat? Parker doesn't have the white face, though. He's got one little white spot on his- yes, hello. On his, uh, belly. Which- no, honey, please don't. Most people don't see the white spot, because- oh, I, I- honey, I can't see. You're kind of in the way. Here, over here. That, thank you. Oh, it was on spikes. This is not Mega Man spikes. Oh, that reminds me, Mega Man 11's, like, demo thing is out, isn't it? I need to check- uh, I played a little bit of it. But I haven't beat it. I played a little bit. Yes! Hi! I think I played a little bit of it and I think I had to stream or something. I guess any game that can... I'm not sure what... Oh, you probably gotta move one of these things. Oh, honey! Oh, these are these telekinesis blocks. Um, honey, if you kind of make this hard to uh, play. Um... Wait, do you- oh! Oh, I see- oh, wait, oh, oh, no, I missed the thing- oh! You're supposed to get- oh, okay. You're supposed to get that, uh, diamond, but oh, ruby, whatever it is. I'm- I'm act- you can't see it, but I'm, like, weaving around Parker to see what's going on. <laughs> if you want to make a game more difficult, just- just get a cat, and then play the game. They will increase the difficulty tenfold. It's a free hard mode for every game. Oh god. Right, speaking of hard mode, I need to get back to La Mulana too. That game is so brutal though. And I had to I had to tap out for I was going to I was making a guide myself and I was like, I huh? Oh. Right. Wait, what? Maybe we have to beat all these? No? Wait a minute. You see those crack blocks? I wonder. No? Oh, yes! Oh, you gotta break all of the block! Oh, I see. I see how it works. Okay. So there's always some fun new mechanic to discover with both the, uh... The bosses always have their own thing. And, uh, so does each level. Uh-oh, Parker. 
Parky, please. Oh. Ah, let's revive. The when you revive, it takes one of the the paw things at the uh, top left there. So you can see I have 83. So I mean, it's not really it's not a super limited re resource. It's kind of like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, where you, you get a lot of lives, but you can use them moderately quickly. I would say I die a lot less in this than I do in tro tro Tropical Freeze. So those games are. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure it really needs a lives mechanic, because like you die a lot, but like you you get a lot of lives, and it just feels unnecessary. All right, I'm gonna do one more level. Um. Give it put up. Ooh, no, honey. I'm sorry. I have a browser open here and Parker just unpaused the video. Very helpful boy, indeed. Speaking of helpful boy, I had, I, I had been trying to clint and trim his claws and um, I think I've gotten about six, or no, I've gotten about maybe seven or eight from his front paws. And uh... Yeah, he's very hard to do to trim his claws. He does not like. It. He's such a chill boy, but if you have to hold him to trim his claws, you get you get you get like two paws, two claws per go. You really, it's a really a two-man operation. But I don't like to like invite somebody over and be like, hey, could you hold my cat so I can like trim his claws and he can like shear our flesh. It's a little awkward, so I just do it myself, but it's like... Then it gets done less easily. Okay. Uh-oh, that one over there is going to be a problem. No, no, fast. Move fast, Spokey! Oh! How do you... Is there some kind of trick that I'm missing, or...? This has got to be... got to be something, right? Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong! Boop! Oh, no, boop! Yes, there we go. Okay, but then I didn't... Okay. Wait, what? Oh, I still didn't get it right! Okay. I think jumping on them does slightly less damage than the thing. This is that's a that's a tricky one. There we go. Got it. Oh, for me's sake! All right, I'm just gonna revive. The the revives are pretty cheap unless you keep it goes up. I'm not sure if it doubles or if it just goes up by two every time. But your second revive is four. Costs four. I've never needed more than two revives. Uh, it's, it's, it's a nice safety mechanic. Like I said, I think... Actually, with the revive mechanic, this game's a lot more, more generous than most everything I've seen. I mean, it's gonna affect your score, I guess. But I'm just, I'm just gonna tell you a little secret. I don't really care about my score. Yeah. Right. I'm just gonna go. I've never cared about score. I like games when there's like an A rank. I'll go for an A rank in a scored game. Or, you know, whatever best rank is. But if it's just like, you know, arbitrary score and you have to like go on gamefacts.com and be like, oh hey guys, did you get level 3000 on the, the blaster score stage? And everyone's like, what, what, what are you talking about? This is Final Fantasy VIII's board. And you know, it's just... It's just not that fun for me, personally. I think you gotta... Yeah, you gotta get this one on the bottom. So I had to constantly mention uh, Yoshi's Island, but the the boss design, it really does remind me of Slavo the Slime. Doesn't it? The, the gen, I mean, it's just a generic blob thing, but... I mean, they split up a lot, and it really does feel like there's a lot of uh, Mario influence here. Maybe I'm just thinking a lot about Yoshi's Island. It's a good thing to think about. 
All right, that's Magic Cat. Uh, I think we get it pretty good. Wait, unlocked. Oh. Uh, how does this warp thing work? Do I have to like consume an item for that? Destroy an obstacle. Oh yeah, there's items. I haven't. Let me go. This is an item shop. I haven't figured out exactly what the deal with the items are. There's, there's these ponds. Oh, I can't get to that pond. So there seems to be a little bit more to this game than just beat the levels and do the things. Um, you can buy items with with the rubies that I keep wanting to call diamonds. They're cut like diamonds, but they're rubies. Um, I want to. Let me buy that hammer. Fresh regenerate using two MP. So you can regenerate health with that item, I guess. How do I destroy an item on the map? Minus three paw points. Wait, wait, does that, does that mean like this or like, oh, you destroy the trees? Huh, that's interesting, can I like, no? Um, what's this pond business? Secret ponds too. All right, we're gonna find out the mystery of the ponds. We got a paintbrush with like goo. Oh, oh I'm, I'm turquoise. Oh, you can change your color. I didn't know that. We found like the, the magic, pa the, the rainbow paintbrush from Neopets. With the spooky scythe statues. I don't know what we just got. I'm not entirely familiar with what just happened there. I'm, 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 I found the magic piece of rainbow crystal. I assume that's like something for like the secret final boss, maybe? Weird. Um, I guess you can make your own little shortcuts. That's neat. I, I figured there should be like, you buy a hammer. Gems pond. Can I like go back to orange? There we go. <laughs> That's neat. So the ponds let you just switch colors, I guess. Hmm. So I guess there's a little more to the game than I thought, but uh... I think we get the, the general gist of what's going on here. I wonder how you get over there. I'm sure I'll figure it out as I play. But yeah, that's Magic Cat. And <laughs> Parker's ears keep peeking up every time I say cat. Um, <laughs> that's Magic Cat and a bunch more Switch stuff coming up pretty soon. Um, I'll probably be checking out... Um, I'll do a video for the Brave Dungeon and Dark Witch combat thing. I, I don't know why I didn't cover that earlier. Uh, oh, and Rive. I think I forgot to do a video of Rive's final release. Uh, Graceful Explosion Machine I mean to do a video of... Um, Foxes and Force I didn't enjoy too much personally. It just feels, it's a little bit, trying a bit too hard to be difficult platformer thing. I like a nice, a more chill kind of thing. I like when platformers are like this and they're like, the difficulty is more in like perfecting the level and like getting all of the extra things like, uh, N++ was like that. Beating the level, I mean, N++ is really hard, but uh, getting all of the gold is the crazy hard stuff. It's like, I can do without the crazy hard stuff. I just want the regular hard stuff, you know? Anyway, that's Magic Cat. And there's a freaking regular cat on my desk absorbing all of my space. Thanks, Parker. Can you say hi to the camera? Oh, <laughs> he never says hi when I want him to. Oh, well. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>